The fire and ice stages were always neat to me in the Galaxy games. If I wasn't staring at the beautiful aurora skylines that blend to space, I was being creeped out by the sky trees staring down upon me. But man, these levels just were gorgeous. Maybe I'm just a sucker for how ice looks in the Mario games, but it's something I always remember fondly. But beyond that, I always remembered how big these levels were. Freeze Flame Galaxy had such large planets that were on the edges of the galaxy, and Shiverburn Galaxy was fixated within a monstrous canyon. Given how similar the levels were, I always wondered if they were somehow neighboring galaxies as well. But we're going to sweep away the nostalgia for a second here and shelve the world of Shiverburn. We've covered that level pretty extensively in my previous video showcasing the creepy beings on the brim of the canyon, and now it's time to pay Freeze Flame Galaxy a visit, because within Freeze Flame Galaxy is actually a pretty odd spectacle. A question mark block positioned above a reverse gravity plane that divides the center of a planet. So buckle up everyone, because it's time for another trip into space with good old Swanky Box. June 2nd, 2019. On this very normal Sunday, I released my upload for the week which talked about a mysterious set of eyes beneath the sand in Dusty Dune Galaxy. I began checking the comments not long after the video went out, when one in particular caught my eye. It was brief, but it perplexed me. The comment was by a viewer named Leander Atlas Lund Bedstead, and all it said was, I have found a question mark block inside one of the planets in Freeze Flame Galaxy. That's it. Now, the video I had released that day was actually another discovery that I was tipped off about too. People were checking out the level in an online viewer called Noclip, and had discovered it. I can only imagine that this person had done the same thing, given that most people don't boot up free cam tools themselves. So I thought that would be the best place to start. It had been a while since I actually explored Freeze Flame Galaxy with the current tool set that I have today. I honestly think the last time I was there at all was in early 2017, and even then, it was only for a bit. Given that this person said that the question mark block was positioned inside of a planet though, I immediately ruled out the giant ice mountain. I think generally people refer to planets in Super Mario Galaxy as anything that is basically round, so I turned my attention to planets like those. Generally, that doesn't leave us with a whole lot, as we have a few lava planets we fly by when we come in, and then the two other circular planets within the stage. One being the dual ice and lava plant, and the plant that has lava on both sides of its interior. Since the interior plant didn't make too much sense since we were able to go inside of it, I decided to focus on the dual plant. And that's when I noticed the peculiar block just flooding there. So in Freeze Flame Galaxy, there are a lot of different star missions that take us to different areas. It isn't until the third star that we come to this planet though. Anytime we start this level, we generally begin on the Ice Ring planet. On the mission Hot and Cold Collide, this planet is changed though. There are lava spheres overlapping the ice, and fireballs are being shot across the planet. When Mario makes his way to the end of the ring, he will activate a launch star that will take him over to the middle of the level, on a planet called Ice Water Up Down Planet. Named appropriately because that's exactly what this planet has in it. In the starting area, there is frigid water that Mario must dodge otherwise he will take damage. There is a large door that is sealing off the second half of the planet, and Mario needs to spin on a valve in order to open it. This allows him to access the lava side of the planet through a narrow passageway. Once over here, there's another valve that Mario needs to spin within the lava in order to open up the fire flower. With the fire flower, Mario can then complete this section of the level and move on. But we don't want to yet, because inside this room is actually where this mysterious block is. In fact, it's not quite as mysterious as one would think, or at least in this context. It's actually the block above the fire flower that is normally loaded on this scenario, so technically we could wall kick our way up there and break it open. But that's not what's interesting about this block though. The real reason this block is neat is because it is one of the only objects in this area that persists upon loading a different scenario. And by a different scenario, I'm referring to a different star mission. And when we're on a different star mission, this block becomes a whole lot more challenging. So hypothetically, if we were to make our way over to this planet on a different star, we encounter some strange stuff. Immediately upon landing in this area, we notice that the water appears to still be present, but everything else is gone. No enemies, blocks, valve, or even a door. But upon exploring further, we realize that the water actually isn't here either. Only the surface graphic for the water is still present, and the actual water layer itself is gone. This means we can stand under the water and nothing happens to us. It's a bit trippy honestly. Since there isn't a door, we're free to head on through the tunnel to the other side of the planet. But we're met with something bizarre. The entire underside of the planet is completely gone. No lava, rocky walls, or any objects are here. The only thing left behind appears to be the sinking block object. Until we look up, that is. And there is the elusive floating block. So when this was viewed for the first time in the model viewer, since this part of the planet is unloaded, the block looked like it was just floating down below. This was because it's missing the geometry that is normally below it. But this raises the question, can we break the block? 
So let me sort of outline the challenge to this. First and foremost, let's talk about why this area is gone, but the other side isn't. This planet as a whole is actually split into two parts. The main outer shell of the planet that we can see from far away actually includes the icy side of the planet and its geometry. The lava side is then loaded in on top of this object on the bottom half of the planet. The game developers cleared everything off the planet for a couple different reasons. For one, the draw distance of the game would unload the objects anyways, or at least most of them. And two, they are on the bottom half of the planet and can never be seen anywhere else in the level, unlike the top part of the planet. Since you can see this brown planet anywhere else in the stage by looking around, they need to keep it here for consistency's sake. But when they pulled out the other group of objects, what is left behind is essentially a void. So just for the fun of it, is it possible to get to the block? There's no floor for us to stand on at all around here. If we long jump out into the absent area, we basically get sucked towards the middle of the planet and flip around continuously. This happens because gravity is pushing us into areas that gravity is reversed in. Thus, we're caught in the absolute middle of these two forces. This then pushes us backwards and slightly out of bounds near where the pathway was that we used to get down here. No matter how we long jump though, there is no way to get anywhere substantial, and the block is too high to be reached. So the only option we have is to hopefully make it into the outer shell of the planet. Assuming it has collision, that would allow us to then walk around the outside and to where we need to go. But that comes with another set of problems. Generally, all the walls within this planet can't be wall kicked off of. A wall kick will grant us some decent height in terms of reaching the outer edges of the planet, but no matter where we go, we can't utilize them. However, there is a method to getting up top. Documented by a player called Glitchfish a long time ago, apparently a perfectly timed triple jump grants us enough height with a spin to make it onto the slope geometry of the outer edges of the passageway. With a few jumps combined with spins, we can climb the slope and make it to the exterior of the planet. Navigating the outside of the planet is a bit of a hassle because the camera doesn't work too well and it can be hard to change direction once gravity inverts. But we can make it to the other side. Funny thing is, if we were on the correct mission for this star, we would actually encounter freezing water out here that would hurt us. It actually makes navigating harder because it's set between the two gravity planes that are pointing towards each other, but it also serves as a barrier that both hurts Mario and cancels his jump momentum. But I digress. With some careful running and jumping, we can make it to the edge of the void. And down below us is the block we desire. Unfortunately, the camera does not cooperate at all when we jump off the edge, and it can make it difficult to see where we are going. If we do fall, gravity will throw us in limbo, and we'll have to start all over again. But with a well-placed long jump that we don't hold forward on, we can pass over the block and then grab the edge of it pulling us up. And with this, we've made it to the elusive question mark box. But there's another issue we come across. In a previous video, I covered the concept about how brick blocks can be broken with a ground pound as we pass through the block. And even in other Mario games, we can ground pound blocks from above to repeatedly knock coins or items out of them. But this mechanic wasn't in Super Mario Galaxy 1. Ground pounding a question mark block actually doesn't open the box at all. They can only be opened by striking them from below. And with no ground below us that can be utilized, that means we can't open this box at all in this scenario, which sucks. If we turn back the clock though and go here on the correct scenario, we will find that the box does contain star bits. But those star bits, while present on all map sets, will never be collected on the alternative scenarios. They exist out here, floating in the vacuum of space in this deleted environment, but given the circumstances, they won't ever really be collected here. Kind of strange to think about. Everything about the floating platform on this block were deleted. Just another artifact left behind by a developer for us to hypothesize about. Before wrapping up, I did want to fly on over to the lava plant and show that it's possible to walk around the outside of it. There's like an invisible casing around the plant, and Mario floats over top of the actual ground, which allows us to walk over certain cracks and seams in the split crust of the lava sphere. Interesting enough, the lava pillars can only burn Mario up until a certain extent, but they do act as lava. And on top of that, those magma planets we flew by at the start of the level actually can't hurt us as well. Unlike similar planets in other levels, touching them causes us to get burned, and we plummet into the atmosphere down below, where it takes about a minute until we actually die. Just wanted to throw those two things in for all of you. But with that, as always, I'd love to hear your thoughts on all of this, so please share them in the comments below. Thanks for watching, guys and gals, and until my next video, cheers.